Okay, welcome back everyone to Chapter 22, The End of Empire, The Global South on the Global Stage, 1914 to the Present. And we're going to start with uh, Toward the Freedom Struggles for Independence. I want you guys to um, keep in mind here this AP focus um, with this chapter is decolonization. And that can serve as a historical frame along with Chapter 18, which deals with the creation of imperialist relationships. Uh, nationalism played an enormous role in both the European push for imperialism and the colonial push back against imperialism. And other movements of international reform and revolution are also described in this chapter with, uh, or excuse me, which is rich in opportunities for comparison. Now, as the end of the school year approaches, remember to continue to focus on non-Western topics. Uh, the 20th century histories of Africa and Asia and Latin America can sometimes uh, be glossed over if we revert to teaching the topics with which we are most familiar. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi serves as a key example of how individuals and groups supported nonviolence. Furthermore, uh, Gandhi's ideas on religious tolerance, economic self-sufficiency, and westernization provide a framework for analysis that reaches beyond his positions of nonviolence. And this chapter explores the differing approaches of Turkey's secular reforms at the beginning of the 20th century and Iran's Islamic revolution of late 20th century. Now, these two large neighboring countries in the Middle East represent entirely divergent trends on the issues of modernization and the role of religion within the political sphere. How changing Latin American economies or economics and social roles can be analyzed in order to place the broader global transformations into historical context. And many of the major themes of the 20th century, such as the rise of Marxist movements, um, the Cold War, urbanization, and globalization can be viewed by examining Latin American case studies. Now, the dissolution of empires and the drive towards independence took many different forms as described in this chapter. Uh, the nonviolent approach of Gandhi in India contrasts sharply with the approach of Ho Chi Minh in Vietnam. And the religious motiva motivations of the Iranian Revolution contrasted with the religious motivations of the anti-apartheid movement in South Africa. And analyzing the range of different approaches can help you guys build more sophisticated analysis. Okay, so let's start with um, Toward of Freedom Struggles for Independence. Okay. So what makes the role of computers in African classrooms particularly important? Well, in the wake of national independence movements after World War II, most African nations continued to struggle economically. And education, and specifically education in modern technologies, is one of the chief strategies for many of these nations to improve the welfare and prosperity of their populations. But who is missing from this group of students? There are no girls in this picture. It could be that the classroom is split between the genders and we just don't see the other half of the class, but it's more likely that this is a class um, that is an all boys school. Uh, this speaks not only to the seg uh, segregation of genders in contemporary Africa, but also to the limited access to education for women and girls who may not get the same support from their families. Okay, Nelson Mandela of South Africa spent 27 years in prison for treason, sabotage, and conspiracy. A decolonization was vastly important in the second half of the 20th century. The newly independent states experienced political, um, or had experiences that were political, or excuse me, exper experimented politically, economically, and culturally. And these states faced enormous challenges, uh, divisions of language, ethnicity, race, class, rapidly growing populations, working towards stable politics and modern uh, economies, as well as the influences of industrialized nations in the first world. Now, European colonial empires were not as permanent in the world's political landscape as they seemed to be in the early 1900s. India, Pakistan, Burma, Indonesia, Iraq, Jordan, and Israel all won independence in the late 1940s. And African independence came between the mid-1950s and the mid-1970s. So here's the end of empire in world history. The imperial breakup wasn't new. 
The novelty was mobilization of the masses around a nationalist ideology and creation of a large number of new nation states. And that's where the novelty comes. So the, the new forces of nationalism and national self-determination in the nation, nation state, that's not new. While empires have fallen in the past, this was the first time that the forces of nationalism combined with the desire for national self-determination to form new nation states that would be equal to nation states that had held them as colonial subjects. Now, as part of this process, many of the formerly colonized peoples had to reassert their sense of self and dignity after years of racist uh, desegregation. And another major change was that suddenly empires became illegitimate. Another major change was that the entire concept of empires uh, was de basically discredited, discredited as the world was to be divided into states that represented the people's will and their desires. In the Americas, most of the colonized people were of European origin, holding a common culture with their colonial rulers. Now, the fall of many of the empires of the 20th century, um, we start with the Austrian and Ottoman empires that collapsed in the wake of World War I. Uh, the Russian Empire collapsed, but was soon recreated as the USSR. German and Japanese uh, empires ended with World War II. An African and Asian independence movement shared with other end of empire stories uh, was the ideal of the nation, national self-determination. Uh, Non-territorial empires, like where the United States wielded economic power and influence, that came under attack. And disintegration eventually of the USSR in 1991 was propelled by national self-determination, uh, creating 15 new independent states. Okay, um, and this is a great visual. Uh, this map shows you the different countries that um, also received their independence and from which countries. So based on our uh, map here, oh, I didn't want that, showing... Um, by color, color coordinating it, which European countries had control of which parts of Africa. For example, Belgium, right, the Belgian Congo, uh, France, France, excuse me, with a large portion of um, West and Northwest Africa, Great Britain, right, basically this long strip of uh, Eastern and Central parts of Africa. Um, and, and so forth, and you can see even over here uh, in Asia as well. And, of course, the Koreas up there. And then it gives you the year. So, you know, you can see in Africa, you know, with the differences of Egypt and Ethiopia, we're looking at the 1950s, 60s, and 70s uh, were huge decades for African independence. And then, um, like, for example, India and Pakistan gained their independence in 1947, uh, and then the partition of India, which separates uh, Pakistan and East Pakistan, and then eventually becoming Bangladesh. Okay, let's look at explaining African and Asian independence. So a few people would have predicted imperial collapse in 1900. Several explanations for the decolonization period have emerged. Uh, emphasis on the fundamental contradictions in the colonial enterprise, and historians use the idea of conjuncture to explain the timing of decolonization. And there are changes in social values were, um, that were enormously encouraging to Africans and Asians seeking political independence. And those independence movements um, were contested everywhere. Independence efforts usually were not cohesive movements, of uniformly oppressed people. Each situation was unique to the others. And there was a fragile coalition of conflicting groups and parties within these movements. So we see contradictions of the colonial empires. Major factors for the collapse of the colonial empires were the numerous contradictions between European ideals and the nature of colonial rule. How were Christians, right, heirs of the Enlightenment and democratic states able to justify the stark injustices of colonial rule? And so a new international climate developed after World War II. Decolonization also saw some clear conjunctures of new forces after World War II. The war weakened Britain, France, um, Holland, and the United Nations offered a new forum for arguing their anti-colonial cause. 
and several of the colonizers began to prepare to divest themselves as their colonies, but also to establish favorable post-colonial economic relationships. And the new elites um, that also challenged colonial rules. There were several generations of Western rule that have produced various elite classes within their colonies that could use their Western education and their military service to, um, you know, for colonizing power and their knowledge of how to mobilize a mass-based nationalist party to challenge colonialism. And a number of charismatic leaders rose up in various colonies. Um, in, in, in those settler colonies, um, empires like the even the Portuguese territories, their volunteers joined the ranks of freedom fighters just to end foreign or uh, white domination. Oh, sorry about that. And that is the end of Section 1. Um, toward freedom, the struggles for independence. I will see you guys again for comparing freedom struggles.